on. And that's the Yugafian receptacle. So, the way I'm seeing it personally, uh, with regards to that, the way I'm seeing it, just so people understand, you need to, co to come here, most likely, hit it from that side with the soldier. I did that here with Tyler. And then uh, it will start removing, r lowering its plates in certain places or adapting them, and then you will, are going to be able to hit it. But to get this far, you certainly need one of these fellows, one, a priest, or maybe two, just to be on the safe side. And the reason behind it is um, psychic ward. Allies with intentiles are immune to f uh, panic and f uh, physic damage attacks, and that thing does have uh, physic damage and panic as well, and he will use it for quite a while, so you will not be able to really reach it. On top of that, just having a level 7 Anno Priest with Mind Crush that deals 100 damage to all enemies. Very bloody powerful, right? Anyway. Let's go. Here's the Virophage. We had no choice. None of the factions had a viable plan. There was no other way to save the planet. And sometimes the ends had to justify the means. That's what we told ourselves anyway. Within minutes, the Pandora virus began to die, and its creatures soon followed. They died by the millions, and soon the rest of us were dying too. Not everyone. Not enough to wipe us out, but too many. The disciples of Anu collapsed first. The exalted died within 24 hours of the virophage being released. And without its prophet, the religion fell apart. The future it had promised was impossible now. Sanhedrin tried to fight, to develop a vaccine. And if they'd had more time, they might have succeeded. But they'd lost too many people to maintain their communities. Slowly, they faded out of existence. New Jericho had wanted a world without the Pandora virus. But this was not how they had imagined it. Within a few months, their havens had become ghost towns. Tobias West was one of the few to survive, having lived long enough to see his empire reduced to dust. In the end, despite our losses, we were the only ones left capable of guiding the survivors. We seized control. Humanity could no longer afford to divide itself into factions. And so the Phoenix Project began to build a new world. But although our responsibilities had widened, we did not forget our initial purpose. The war was not over. Up there in celestial darkness, something ancient and powerful still hungered for our planet. But next time, next time we'd be ready. Okay, so let's see what happens if the ODI hit, uh, meter gets up to full. I'm gonna avoid any conflict, I'm just waiting for that meter to go to 100%. Okay, the long slumber of countless eons has ended. He rises from his dark tomb in the stars and all is consumed as it was rest and so shall it be. The triumph of Yugoth shall echo forever. When our last base fell, we knew we'd lost the war. The Phoenix Project was doomed, and the Earth was lost. But for the Earth that was, and all the Earth that could have been, for our friends and family lost to the mist, for all our dreams and hopes that would never come true, we would keep fighting to the end. Victory. For countless eons, the Ugothian entity had planned this day. With the power to bend an entire ecosystem to its will, its triumph over humanity was inevitable. No wonder it considered itself a god. It knew that even if we defeated its armies, it could wait us out. Its real weapon was the Pandora virus, the ultimate terraforming tool. But there was one possibility it had never accounted for that we would seize that tool for ourselves. It was now that the real war began. The war to recreate the world according to human needs, to build a sustainable system that would allow the individual to flourish. There was no space for New Jericho in the new system, 
Sinedrin could no longer make excuses. Coexistence was impossible. Tobias West was an honorable opponent, but he had to be destroyed. When she heard what Sinedrin had accomplished, the exalted proclaimed that the age of the dead god was over, and the disciples of Anu were dissolved. After that, she disappeared. It did not take long for her religion to be forgotten. Sinedrin began to build the new world. Old species were revived, and new ones were designed. The age of scarcity was over. The earth became a work of art, a testament to human ingenuity. As for the Phoenix Project, we finally had the support we needed. It was time to build, to train, to prepare. Up there, in celestial darkness, something ancient and powerful still hungered for our planet. But next time, next time, we'd be ready. Okay, and thus end... In the end, it wasn't her powers or her followers that allowed us to win. It was her humanity. An alien god spoke to her in her mind, and instead of being dominated or obliterated, she tricked him. By the time he realized what she was doing, it was too late. She'd stolen his knowledge, cut him off from his armies on Earth. He was alone on his dark planet, and humanity was saved. The war wasn't over, of course. It's never that simple. There were still those who wanted to go back to how things were before, to make the same mistakes again. But the Exalted would not allow it. New Jericho fought to the end. She respected that. Tobias West and his people believed in their principles and died for them. With them died the last fragment of the old world. Sinedrin continued to exist. This was not the future they had dreamed of, but somewhere in this changing world there was space for their ideas. They would contribute what they could and hope that conflict could be avoided. Like everyone, they had had enough of war. Humanity began to adapt and evolve. No longer bound by the chains of an imperfect biology, human beings finally flourished. The belief in the dead god and the hierarchies of the disciples fell away. It was no longer necessary to believe in some distant deity when the exalted walked among us. As for the Phoenix Project, we went back to the shadows for a while. We knew the war wasn't over. Up there, in celestial darkness, something ancient and powerful still hungered for our planet. But next time, Next time, we'd be ready. Wars always have winners and losers. This was our moment to savor. Victory against overwhelming odds, against an incursion that threatened to wipe out our species and our world. Human ingenuity got a targeting beacon planted on the receptacle. When West gave the word, we activated the satellite network. We hit the palace with everything we had. After that, the war became one we could win. New Jericho and the Phoenix Project in alliance, fighting to save humanity. Inch by inch, reclaiming the land and then the ocean. The enemy fought back, but wildly, incoherently, without strategy. They were beaten. Next, we had to deal with the infected. We rounded up those we couldn't save and quarantined them in vast camps far away from the new cities. Anyone who didn't comply died. It was the only way. Sinedrin objected, but in the end, they worked with us. The Anu cult resisted us at first, but as the prophecies of their misguided religion failed, they lost hope. They remain an insurgent threat, but one that we are determined to eliminate. There is no place for them in this new age. Much was achieved by one man's vision, but one man cannot shoulder the burden of the world. After the war, Tobias West forged new alliances and began to build a better system. There will be no nations in our future, just one people, humanity. 
determined to protect the rights of every individual to live free and in peace. As for the Phoenix Project, we finally had the support we needed. It was time to build, to train, to prepare. Up there, in celestial darkness, something ancient and powerful still hungered for our planet. But next time, next time, we'd be ready. <laughs>